hello. I don't know if I can see if anybody's watching. Um, we're using a different uh, platform than last week. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, my husband, does all of is doing all of the technical um, the technicalities. No, that's not the right word. Um, anyway, uh, hopefully this is a better format or forum for everyone, and uh, that I learn as I go. Um, I'm going to be starting in about seven minutes. Um, if you are on the chat, um, you can request any uh, poses or areas of the body that you would like to uh, address or um, see or address <laughs> this morning. <laughs> Good thing I didn't start recording this. Um <laughs> Man, I need this Monday morning class just to get my um, my thoughts straight at the beginning of each week. Um, I'm missing my Monday morning people. Um, yeah, I will be thinking about you while I'm teaching this class. Uh, same old room. You might be wondering where all my plants went. They're... Uh, outside hopefully enjoying the rain um yeah i feel like lynn is uh, always here each week to uh check in on my plants <laughs> i did try to feed them well I, I did feed them with uh my kids helped me feed the plants and uh they really were a little heavy-handed with the plant food so um we'll see how that we'll see how that uh manifests in the plant growth, they're right out. They're right out this window. That's why I looked over in that direction. Oh boy, this is uh, hard to get used to. Speaking into the void. Um, yeah, uh, we're gonna start pretty slow today. That's <laughs> that's what I'm feeling. I need, and I'm gonna change the lighting. So attractive shadows on my face. Well, still, I'm so vain. I'd rather not look at myself while I'm doing this, but uh, that's just the, the nature of the setup here. Huh. Well, um, Ava, if you're watching, uh, Johnny is locked out of the room, but he said that uh, he told me to tell you that he misses you. Um, okay, well, I'll just have to do my stupid human trick uh, that I learned yesterday. So hopefully it works again today. Okay. at once. So now they're just going in sync. At some point they go out of sync. I can just do that for the next, uh, man, 10 minutes. Cannot wait to actually start uh, filming the yoga. Please uh, chat with me. I know it might uh, be, feel uncomfortable to pipe in. But um, <laughs> but just help me out here, guys. Um, maybe just sitting and meditating would be a good thing to do for the next four minutes. I'm enjoying this rain right now. I always love practicing in the rain or in inside when it's raining. Okay, let's do a blanket folding tutorial. Uh, for class today, I will be likely utilizing um, a strap. Definitely be utilizing a strap. 
So a strap is an easy thing to um, adapt. You could certainly um, use a towel or a necktie <laughs> if you don't have a um, traditional yoga approved strap. I will approve any alternatives. Um, so definitely a strap. Um, a blanket would be nice to have around. It does not need to be this particular style of blanket, although this is the yoga blanket you are probably most familiar with. Um, any A woven blanket typically works better. Um, and then blocks. Uh, you could substitute a block with other things. I've seen bricks, but um, I don't know how many people have bricks inside their house. You probably don't want to go forage for a wet brick outside. But uh, anyway, uh, maybe using blocks, but uh, you could certainly get away with not using them. And you know what? You could even get away with not using a yoga mat if you don't have one of those. Okay, so here is the blanket folding tutorial. From here, fold in half lengthwise. From here, fold in half. From here, fold in half once more. And this is how most studios stack their blankets in this manner. Um, and then I just go one step further to get double the height and I fold like that for my typical um, seated beginning posture, which is not actually how we're going to start our class today. So um, that was just something to get me to the beginning of class, which I am just so excited to be one minute away from beginning this class. That's how much I am craving yoga, centering, chilling out in my body. Okay, I'm going to move this back and I'm going to press the record button. Not only on the video, but I'm going to start my um, I'm going to start my audio podcast as well. I have so many ways to uh, enjoy this class. Okay, here goes. And um, I'm going to start my pod audio podcast as well. Okay, so we will begin our yoga practice this morning in rock pose. So come to a seated position with your knees together, heels together, and take a seat back on your heels. If this is uncomfortable, you may be sitting on a blanket or you may take a blanket between your hips and heels. So get in a position where you feel supported as we will be here for a few moments, perhaps three to five minutes. Close your eyes, rest your hands on your thighs. And arrive here. Begin the dialogue between your mind and body. Ask your body, how are you feeling right now at this moment? And then listen for the response. Are there areas of discomfort, soreness, pain, tension? Whatever it is, wherever it is, let your mind travel throughout the body, addressing those areas in need, considering the idea that with attention you're beginning to move prana or vital energy through those spaces. 
And with this energy, kind of breaking down blockages, relieving tension. Settle down through the legs and hips. You might feel the sits bones against your heels. Feel that space connected, hips and heels. And extend downward from the sits bones. And then from that place, begin to lengthen up your spine. Shrug your shoulders towards your ears. Loop your shoulder blades together behind your heart, broaden your collarbones, and then allow the weight of your forearms to melt down. Shoulder blades sliding down the back of the chest. Draw your chin down so it's parallel to the floor. Ease the sides of your neck back to better align your head over your heart. Create a tone in your upper abdomen by drawing your front lower ribs in towards one another and then gently towards your back body. Creating awareness at your center, length and strength at your core. Soften the skin. You might picture an aura about you so that the edges of your being lighten, soften, blur. Neutralize the expression from your face. Forehead becomes soft and broad. Cheeks are slack. Eyelids soft and heavy. And now begin to ignite the breath. Breathe in and out through the nostrils. Cultivating a slow and deep breath pattern. Recognizing the qualities of your breath. Are there any areas of roughness where the breath catches. If so, you might attempt to smooth out those areas so that there's an even draw of air into your lungs from bottom, middle to top, and an even emptying of the lungs from top, middle to bottom. If you have not already, draw a gentle contraction in at the back of your throat to begin the practice of Ujjayi Pranayama, the triumphant uprising breath. Tune in to the sound of your own breathing. And if you are um, happen to be practicing with another person in the room, you might listen for their breath as well. Let the sound of the breathing bring you into the present moment and into your own body. The breath can be used in this way throughout the practice as a tool to return to the body, to return to the present. The breath is a thread weaving throughout the practice. So if you think about a, a thread moving it through um, fabric, the thread, the thread will go up and then down, up and then down, just like the breath into the body and out of the body, into the body and out of the body.
Bring your palms together in front of your heart. Press the palms of your hands together. Perhaps feel your fingerprints touch. We will chant OM three times before beginning the moving practice. Exhale to empty the lungs. And inhale for the first of three OMs. Release your palms to your thighs. Slowly lift your head as you open your eyes. We're going to do some spinal uh, opening here. So uh, we're just going to start by rocking the pelvis forward and then back. Inhale, rock the pelvis forward. Exhale, tilt it back. Inhale, forward. Exhale, tilt it back. Now the middle body, ribs jut forward as you inhale. Exhale, draw the belly button in, sides of the waistline back. Inhale, belly extends forward. Exhale, lower ribs draw in and back, belly button in towards your spine. Now moving up the spine, chest moves forward, shoulder blades together on your back, maybe gaze turns up a little bit. Exhale, shoulders forward, heart back, chin toward the chest. Inhale, chest forward, gaze goes up, shoulder blades together. Exhale, shoulders forward, heart back. So let's start to move through these two positions with the pace of our own breathing, exploring the uh, length of the spine. growing and uh, recognizing the range of motion this morning, synchronizing movement with breath. And as you listen to your body, you might begin to make modifications to these movements. So perhaps the, uh, you start to make circles with the ribs, one direction or the other direction. or pause in one shape and then the other. Okay, so let's keep the knees together. Swing the feet out to the left, sitting down on the right hip for Bharat Vajasana, twist. Right hand behind the right hip, left hand crosses to the right thigh. Inhale to grow tall and exhale, begin to revolve. So think about your abdomen, your inner organs shifting from left to right, across the middle back, the chest, the shoulders, the collarbones, eventually taking the neck and the head into the revolution. Right uh, her chin stays parallel to the floor, right shoulder blade hugs to the back of the chest. Uh, common tendency here is for to lean back into that right hand. We're just using the right fingertips onto the floor to really prop the chest up. Use your breath to expand into this shape. An inhale, an opportunity to explore space along the spine between each vertebra. An exhale, perhaps an expansion, a um, surrender deeper into that space. And inhale to come forward, little counter twist before we do the second side. Knees together, feet out to the right. Right uh, foot is in the arch of the left foot. Left hand behind, right hand crosses the left thigh. Inhale, grow tall. Exhale, revolve. Left shoulder blade on the back. Right shoulder gently away from the right ear. Head situated over the heart, heart situated over the center of the pelvis. 
Shifting from right to left, bottom to top, inside to outside, eventually taking the gaze over the left shoulder, chin parallel to the floor. Lead the gaze with the right eye, soften the edges of your mouth, relax your jaw, and then infuse the pose with breath. Inhale, explore, create space. Exhale, a surrender, uh, deepening a um, release into that space. So some, uh, I like to think of the idea of going deeper into the pose, not always as pushing harder, but releasing and surrendering more. Okay, let's inhale to come back to center. Maybe take that counter twist. Okay, I know we've been bending our knees a lot, but uh, this is what I wrote down, so I'm sticking to it. Knees together, angle your shins apart, grab the flesh of your calves, push it back and apart and take a seat between your heels. Likely this will require some height underneath the hips, perhaps in the form of a blanket or a block. And hopefully you have your strap or strap substitute nearby. Root down through your thighs, lengthen along your spine, take your strap, shoulder width distance apart, extend through your knuckles, and then plug your arms into your shoulder sockets. So arms are long and they're engaged in the shoulder sockets. With this engagement, sweep the arms overhead, lengthen up from the waistline, out through the knuckles, stay rooted through the sits bones, wrapping the inner thighs towards the floor, and then slightly start to draw the biceps back behind the ears. So the arms are just coming slightly back. Chin and chest parallel to the, or chin parallel to the floor. Soften the edges of your mouth. Notice what you're feeling in this shape. And then slowly begin to widen the hands apart until you can bring the strap down behind your back. A little shoulder roll. So this is can be quite intense. So move into this uh, with some caution. So the hands might be very wide apart. You might be bending the elbows a little bit. Exhale, strap goes back. Inhale, arms go up. And move a few times with the pace of your own breathing. Again, this is under the heading of warming up. So uh, use this time to check in with your body and start to make some modifications to the instructions. So that might look like one arm bending, the opposite arm extending. So you're getting a focus on one side. Just be curious, recognize that your body is here for you to explore this morning, um, then we will set that off to the side. We're gonna do a lo nice, long, luxurious uh, hand to big toe pose sequence. So again, you will use your strap, lie down on your back, make sure you have room on either side of your mat as you're going to take your legs up and out and all around you. Push through the soles of your feet, lengthen through your tailbone, and then draw your right knee in towards your chest. Loop the strap around your right foot, holding the strap with both hands. Keep the left thigh grounded as you reach up and out through your right heel. Oh, keep your left thigh grounded as you reach up and out through your right heel. So, start communicating with the back of that right leg as that is uh, pr primarily the target of this shape. So notice what you're feeling, where you're feeling along the back of the right leg. So once you have the leg straight or straightish, start to bring the heel up towards 90 degrees. If 90 degrees is easily achieved already, you might start to work past that angle. And notice as you work past that angle, the tendency for this thigh to hop up and the right outer hip to lift towards the right armpit. So you want to widen the hip away. Widen the right hip away from the right armpit so the sides of the body both stay long. So as you communicate with the back of the right leg, recognize the parts of the leg that are most affected by this shape. Where do you feel the most sensation? And those are likely the areas that are tight, 
that are preventing the leg from going any further up towards 90 or past 90. So focus your attention on those areas and with your attention start to imagine movement of energy through those spaces, creating relief and release. Okay, pass the foot and the strap into the right hand. If it's available, you might grab the big toe of the right foot or the outside of the right foot. Otherwise, start to guide the foot with the strap out to the right. I like to put my left hand on my left thigh to push the left thigh back towards the floor. So the tendency again is for the left hip to pop up here, left thigh to lift away from the floor. Keep the left thigh grounded as, as you extend through the inseam of the right leg. So Monday is uh, my first uh, yogi class of the week. I typically teach Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And um, it's, I try to get some other uh, home practice in on at least one of those other days. So I was practicing yesterday in preparation for this class. And for whatever reason, this part of me, this shape, really, um, <laughs> really was feeling tight, feeling sore yesterday. Um, so notice for yourself that every time to your, you come to your mat, there might be something new to discover. A pose might uh, land or um, a pose might um, affect your body in a different way than it ever has before. So put your feelers out there. Notice where is this pose um, bringing you? Where is it... Uh, where is your body calling for attention as you come to this shape? If you want more from this, you might lift the right heel higher or might walk the hand closer to or onto the foot. Keep the front of the chest open skyward. You might consider the similarities between this pose and triangle pose, which I consider to be a very expansive pose. Okay. So from here, let's guide the right leg back through center, pass the right foot or strap into the left hand, right arm out to the right, and then slowly guide the right leg over to the left. So this also uh, is <laughs> was a very intense posture for me yesterday. For whatever reason, I suspect it's uh, partially the amount of hula hooping I've been doing. It's kind of... Um, a meditative practice I can do when I'm hanging out with my kids, um, much like coloring, <laughs> but more physical. <laughs> right shoulder back to the floor, chest is open. So bring your mind into the pose and consider this idea. I really like to think about the practice as uh, the poses being in service of bringing you into your body and thus into the present moment. So let yourself be here now. Not on your phone. <laughs> I guess you're probably on some device if you're watching me, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a confusing thing. Uh, right shoulder back to the floor. Consider that as you are in the pose, you might start to uh, change the pose slightly with time. So the leg might get closer to the floor, the leg might get higher uh, towards your face, or you might need to back off a little bit, giving yourself more slack with the strap. Okay, right leg back to center. Resquare the hips. We're going to place the strap off to the side temporarily. Wrap your hands behind your leg, pointing your fingertips up towards your heel. And then peel your head and shoulders up away from the floor as you pull your, chin, your knee towards your forehead, your chin towards your chest, your forehead towards your knee. So this is a core engagement, belly button pulling in towards your spine, keeping your left leg extended. Soften the edges of your mouth. Keep breathing. Five, four, three, two, one. Slowly lower your head and shoulders back down. Bend your left knee. 
Uh, draw your right knee in and up towards your chest, in and up towards your right armpit. Grab the right foot, interlace your fingers around the sole of the right foot, kick the foot into the hand, then pull the knee down towards the floor. So we're doing happy baby or half happy baby, pushing foot into hand, pulling the uh, knee down with the hands. And notice, where are you feeling? What are you feeling? You might like it, you might not like it. <laughs> um, if you really don't like it, if it's, not, if it's an experience that is too much, find a way to back off to that Goldilocks pose, that perfect porridge, where it's not too hot, not too much sensation, and not too little, not too, I would call that boring, bland, cold porridge. Extend your left leg if you like, if the pose is too bland porridge for you. Left heel down, left calf down. Keep pushing your foot into your hands. Pull the knee down. Soften the edges of your mouth. Option to enjoy your present experience. Luxuriate in this opportunity to be in your body with your breath. Left foot back to the floor, Le right foot hooks over the left knee, and then draw the left knee in towards your chest. So there's going to be lots of options here for the hip opener. So we're either going to interlace the fingers behind the thigh, option one, Interlace the fingers in front of the shin, option two, all the while widening this right knee away, keeping the right foot flexed. Option three, hook the elbow around the uh, foot, hook the other elbow around the right knee and extend the left leg straight. So here the head might pop up a little bit. Try to lower the left heel back to the floor. So this is kind of a pigeon flipped over on its back. Soften the edges of your mouth. If your head is lifted, you're likely tensing in the back of the neck like I am. Try to soften where you can. There is another variation of this that supports the head. If you'd like to do that, you're going to take the uh, left elbow underneath the right ankle so that your palm is uh, pointing towards your face and then you're going to take your right arm extend along your ear bend your right elbow and then try to clasp your fingers so if you're here with me this is uh this is pretty deep in the right hip the head releases back onto the right shoulder so you get a shoulder opening as well as the hip opening Remain present, remain with breath, find your, find your perfect porridge. Couple more breaths. Release the hands, release the foot, release the both feet back to the floor, re-square the hips, and we have that whole journey to take on the second side. Okay, extend the right leg out, draw the left knee into the chest, loop the strap around the left foot, and extend the left leg straight. So again, start with a lot of slap on your strap, holding the uh, strap with both hands, and then work on extending the back of the leg, grounding the right thigh. Once the leg is extended, start to lift the heel towards a 90 degree angle. Heel over the hip. And then if you've achieved that while keeping the right, the left hip drawing away from the left armpit, you might start to bring the leg in closer to the chest, walking the hands up the strap, maybe even to the foot. The traditional, uh, the name of the pose would imply that you were grabbing the big toe uh, once if you have a grip on the foot. Personally, I like to uh, grab the outside and inside of the foot on those days when <laughs> It feels appropriate to grab the foot. Not that today's not one of those days for me. Um, 
but you can experiment with different foot holds once you uh, are able to hold the foot. Right thigh down, extend up through the left heel, pull back through the left toes, and you might shift the foot a little bit. That will just give you, uh, help you explore the uh, calf muscles, the uh, outside of the shin, the ankle. So just notice how subtle changes to the shape will cause different sensation. And give yourself a little freedom, a little liberty to explore your own body. So. I'll tell you, I'll say more about that in a moment. Okay, you might go to a slightly deeper expression of the pose since uh, we've had a little time to open up here. And now pass the strap or the foot into the left hand. Right arm can extend out to the right or again ground the right thigh as the left leg winds out to the left. Stay broad across the front of your pelvis, keeping the right thigh bone grounded, grounding. Stay broad across the front of the chest, keeping the right shoulder hugging back to the floor. Extend through the left, the inseam of the left leg from the inner groin through the inner feet, the inner left foot, and then from the outer foot, draw back to the left outer hip. Think about the tailbone lengthening down towards the right foot. So the lower spine stays long. So as I was saying, I mentioned this last week in my class, if you were with me, um, the idea I had of like the freaky Friday yoga where um, you could do yoga in somebody else's body and how, how interesting that would be. <laughs> um, because if you practice a lot, you kind of, you have, you do have expectations of what a pose feels like, where you feel it. And it's, I think it's very likely that if we had the experience of somebody else's body, uh, we would see that yoga is very different for each of us, and we can, we can relate our experiences, but we can never know what it is to be in somebody else's body, unless we Freaky Friday. Um, tell me your favorite version of Freaky Friday. I also like vice versa. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that one, because I'm a big <laughs> Fred Savage fan. Okay, I take the strap in your uh, right hand, Guide your left leg over to the right, hugging the left shoulder back towards the floor. Whew. This is a lot. My porridge is extra. The porridge is a little extra right now, but I'm kind of liking it. I'm kind of veering towards the pop of air in this pose, and that's, you know, sometimes the... Uh, Sometimes uh, baby bear doesn't have the right porridge for you. Sometimes you want that papa bear porridge. Sometimes you want that mama bear porridge. Be with whatever porridge you're choosing. Hug the left shoulder back towards the floor. Push out through the left foot. I didn't say that's on the first side, but if, it's hard to see my thumb with all of this um, blonde wood. But <laughs> if you're watching the video, I'm taking my thumb to the crease of my uh, left hip and just easing my left hip away from the, my face. So that will likely intensify the sensation in your left hip. Take a few conscious deep breaths. And guide the leg with the strap back to center. And then if you still have the strap, release it off to the side. Resquare your hips and draw your left knee. Oh, nope. Extend your right leg straight. Left leg up. Wrap your hands behind your left leg. Fingertips pointing towards your heel. Curl your head, neck, and shoulders away from the floor, sliding your fingertips up towards your heel. Chin to chest, belly button in towards the spine round the spine, lengthen actively up the back of the leg, soften the edges of the mouth, keep the right leg grounded for five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly lower the head, neck and shoulders down. Now right foot to the floor, hug the left knee in and up towards the left armpit. Okay, grab the left foot with both hands, inside and outside, perhaps interlacing the fingers. 
Kick your foot into your hands and then begin to pull your knee down towards the floor, setting up for half happy baby. So again, check in here. This may be your porridge. Uh, if this porridge is too cold for you or if cold porridge is exactly what you need this morning, stay Ex or extend the right leg straight. So as you extend the right leg straight, the left knee is going to pop up. Keep pushing and pulling. I used to call this um, tug of war, but it's like the opposite of tug of war. It's more like uh, your foot and your hands are sumo wrestlers and you're like pushing, you're trying to push each other out, um, but you're in a stalemate. Uh, push and pull, right heel to the floor, right calf to the floor. Um, without, an, without a present audience, I'm just saying things that I think are funny without, uh, without anybody um, <laughs> telling me otherwise. <laughs> so, uh, right, write me a comment, tell me I'm not funny and I'll uh, cut it out. Okay, right heel to the floor, push your left foot into your hands. And again, opportunity to arrive, opportunity to enjoy. Let your breath, let the experience of the pose bring you into your body and into the present. Again, you can picture the breath threading in and out. Right foot to the floor, left ankle across the right thigh. Draw your right knee in towards your chest, interlace the fingers behind the thigh or in front of the shin. And very, uh, very many more options. So we're targeting the left outer hip here in this pose similar to pigeon pose, pigeon on its back. Uh, so option next would be to hook the left foot in the right elbow, the uh, uh, the right knee in the left elbow, interlace the fingers, cradle the shin as you extend the right leg straight. So the head and shoulders are going to be off the floor and that might be a little uncomfortable. Try to relax your jaw, soften the edges of your mouth, reach through your right heel, try to ground the heel, ground the calf. And grounding might just be a, a conceptual thing. You're just pushing it in the direction of the ground. Okay, so final option for this shape would be to hook the right elbow underneath the left ankle, widen the left knee away from the left shoulder, take the left arm up over the head, bend the elbow, and interlace your fingers so that the head is cradled in the left elbow. And then you can release the head back. And by releasing the head back, you'll get a shoulder stretch, you'll intensify whatever's happening in the left hip. And remember to take some time to breathe in the shape. Recognize how the pose changes and moves with breath. Okay, release the hands, right foot back to the floor, uncross your legs, knees back to the mat, arms at your sides, extend your legs out one more time. So we're going to do a couple leg lifts, so the hands can be underneath the hips, most supported for the low back, arms can be at your sides, less supported, arms can be overhead, even less support for your low back, but uh, more demand on the strength of your core. Squeeze your legs together, push out through the soles of the feet. Exhale to bring the, or inhale, sorry, inhale, lift the heel to 90 degrees. Exhale, release the heels back to the floor with, the, with control. Inhale, lift the legs up. If two legs at one time is too much, just do one leg at a time. Uh, exhale down. Do this for a little while, keeping the head, shoulders grounded, low back grounded. Yeah, I never know the breath uh, synchronization that I prefer. Now I'm thinking I do like exhale to lift the legs and inhale to lower the legs. Try it for yourself. I don't, I'm not going to say one way is more correct than the other, although somebody might say that one way is more correct than the other. That person's not going to be me. <sighs> okay. 
Heels back to the floor, bend your knees, roll to one side, and press your way up and back into downward facing dog. Wasn't that a luxurious way to begin the practice, to begin the week? Man, I feel certainly more grounded and in my body than I did 45 minutes ago. Push your hands down and forward, shift your hips up and back, walk out your dog. And as I like to um, tell you guys, option to walk your dog slowly. So as you bend one knee, reach the opposite heel towards or to the floor, talk to the back of that straight leg. Have a conversation. Shift the hips from side to side. Notice where you're feeling, what you're feeling, how you might be experiencing this dog walk differently than every other time you've walked your dog. Especially after that nice, long, luxurious um, hand to big toe sequence we just did. Okay, come into stillness with your dog, perhaps keeping a lot of bend in your knees, focusing on the distance between your fingertips, pushing down and forward, and your hips reaching up and back. As you inhale next, lift your right leg straight up and back, three-legged dog, look to the top of your mat, exhale and lunge your right foot between your hands. So you want your knee directly over your heel. If it's not there, grab your right ankle with your right hand and bring it forward. Create a long stride. Your hands may also be on blocks, fingertips or bald fists on either side of your right foot. Let the right thigh melt parallel to the floor and lift strongly through your left inner upper thigh. You might bend that knee slightly to wrap the outer left hip forward and then lift strongly through the left inner upper thigh. Chin and chest forward, shoulders away from the ears. And today, we're going to melt the back knee to the floor. Very likely you'll want some padding underneath the left knee, especially if you have a uh, broken patella. You probably won't want to do this at all, but that's, a, that's an injury I've heard of. <laughs> and I, uh, I'm sorry for anybody who is suffering that injury right now. Uh, so um, it, pad it. <laughs> Pat it or don't. Scissor the legs together. Bring the hands to the front thigh. Push your elbows straight. Lift your chest up. Shoulders on the back. Lower ribs in and back. Tailbone lengthens down. And then if it feels okay, release the hips gradually, slowly, mindfully, down and forward. So where are you feeling? What are you feeling? Okay, arms to your side, shoulders back, broaden the collarbones, sweep the arms out, up and overhead, possibly look up, draw the biceps back behind the ears, curl the head back, lift the heart, soften the edges of the mouth, breathe. And then chest forward, arms forward, hands frame the front foot, Send the hips back. You might slide the heel forward a couple of inches. Draw the hips back for a runner's stretch. Uh, left hip over the left knee. Reach the chin and chest forward as you pull the right toenails back. Lift into the right kneecap. And then perhaps melt the body over the right leg, tilting chin to chest, rounding the spine. Forehead towards or to the legs. Forearms might melt towards or to the floor. Couple of breaths here. And you may be thinking, when are we gonna start uh, moving more quickly, picking up some heat and all and whatnot. We will do that shortly. Right foot back to the floor, tuck the left toes, send the right leg back, inhale, second side, left leg lifts, lift to the top of your mat, exhale, lunge your left foot forward between your hands. Same long stride, knee over the heel. Melt the hips down and forward so you feel the weight of your pelvis and then lift strongly through your back inner upper thigh. Shoulders away from the ears, collarbones broad. Feel your feet on the floor, perhaps scissor them together to square the legs, square the hips and tone the legs. 
Melt the right knee down. Again, possibly onto some padding. Scissor the legs together, hands to the front thigh. Elbows straight, prop the chest up. Lower ribs in and back, tailbone down, collarbones broad. Melt the hips down and forward. Keeping the lower ribs pulling away from the front thigh. So be here with this second side. Perhaps take note of how this pose might vary from the first side. Arms at your sides, palms forward, shoulders roll back. Inhale, sweep the arms overhead, palms touch. Look up and out uh, past your thumbs. And then begin to draw your biceps back behind your ears. Imagine a, head, a hand supporting your head. Start to release the head back into the cradling of that hand. Lift the back of the heart. Curl back, look back. Scissor the uh, left leg back, right knee forward, melt the hips, soften the edges of the mouth, and then chest forward, arms forward, head forward, hands frame the front foot on the mat or on blocks. Shift the hips back, maybe slide the heel forward a few inches. Draw back through the left toes, back through the left hip, lift into the left kneecap, and then uh, start to walk the hands forward, draping the uh, torso over the left leg, elbows melt towards the floor, upper back rounds. Lengthen the back of the left leg, create space between the vertebra along the back of the body, countering our back bend with this forward fold. And inhale, come back, plant the palms, send the left leg back, downward facing dog, possibly walk out your dog. Inhale, come forward to a plank position, shoulders over your wrists. If you need to slide your feet back, do, and then keep them in that position. If your hips are down here, if your hips are below the, uh, <laughs> not in alignment with your shoulders and heels, then perhaps consider bringing your knees to the floor for your plank position. Tone the muscles of your legs, shoulders away from the ears, collarbones broad, shift weight out of your wrists, down into your knuckles, push your fingerprints into the floor so that the edges of your fingernails begin to discolor. And then exhale, knees to the floor. Tilt your tailbone up like you're doing cow pose in the low back, reach your chin and chest forward, bend your elbows down. Slide forward onto your belly, press the tops of your feet down, engage the muscles of your legs. Shoulder blades on the back, inhale, curl up, little baby cobra pose, keep breathing. Elbows in, shoulder blades down the back, engage the legs, press the tops of the feet down. And then begin to push your hands down and isometrically pull the heels of your hands towards the back of your mat as you come up into your king cobra pose. Sides of the neck back, crown of the head, tops of the ears lift. Soften the edges of your mouth. Lengthen back through your tailbone. Keep engaging the legs. Feel the strength of your back body lifting and opening your front body. Exhale, lower down. Tuck the toes. Send the hips all the way back to the heels briefly for child's pose. And then shift the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Three breaths here. Inhale fully. Exhale completely, hands down and forward, hips up and back, head releases. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale, last breath. Exhale completely. With your next inhale, lift your right leg straight up and back, lift to the top of your mat. Exhale, lunge your right foot forward, melt your left knee down. Inhale, sweep the arms out, up and overhead, palms touch. Exhale, hands frame the front foot, step the left foot forward, fold over your legs. Inhale, palms to shin, shoulder blades on the back, halfway lift. Exhale and fold in. Inhale, rise up, sweep the arms out, up and overhead, palms touch at the top. Exhale, hands through heart center and arms to your sides, Tadasana. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, flow forward. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, as you fold, send the right leg back, knee to the floor. Inhale, sweep up, melt the hips down and forward, look up. Exhale, hands frame the front foot, send the left leg back, plank position. Inhale and plank. 
Exhale, lower down, either knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, curl up, upward dog or cobra. Exhale, press the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Inhale, first of three breaths. Exhale completely. Inhale. And exhale. Last deepest breath in here. And exhale if you'd like, sigh it out. Inhale, left leg lifts. Look to the top of your mat. Exhale, lunge your left foot forward between your hands, right knee down. Inhale, sweep the arms out, up and overhead, palms touch. Exhale, hands frame the front foot, step the back foot forward, fold forward. Inhale, palms to shin, shoulder blades on the back. Exhale and fold. Inhale, rise with the breath, sweep up, look up, palms touch. Exhale, hands through heart center and arms to your sides. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, flow forward. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, fold and lunge with the left foot, knee down. Inhale, sweep up. Exhale, hands frame the front foot, step back, downward facing dog. Three breaths here, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Last biggest breath in. Exhale, let it out. Inhale, right leg lifts. Look to the top of your mat. Exhale, lunge your right foot forward between your hands. Again, same long stride. Left knee melts to the floor. Possibly onto padding. Look over your left shoulder. Point your left toes. Bend your left knee. Reach back for the inside of your left foot. Very crampable situation here. So you might shift your hips around a couple of times to release those uh, Charlie horses that... Um, you might be experiencing, I'm definitely experiencing. Uh, so use the strap or the hand to grab the inside of the left foot, pull the heel towards the outer hip, shift the hips back for less, shift the hips forward for more. Maybe the right hand is on the right thigh, maybe it's the inside of the leg. Deep uh, quad stretch here. Find it, try to breathe through it. Notice what the edges of your mouth are doing. Are they curling down into a deep frown? <laughs> um, if so, try to curl those edges up. Smile, smile for yourself. Okay. Second side. Hand to uh, left hand to the floor. Look over your right shoulder. Point your toes. Bend your knee. Reach for the outside of the right foot. Now or the left foot with the right hand. Kick the foot into the hand as much as you don't want to, and then pull the heel towards the outer, outer hip. Foot in the hand, heel to the hip. Melt the hips down and forward, or do that less. Left forearm might come to the floor, chest might revolve open to the right wall. Okay, release the left foot. Um, bring, walk the right foot out to the right a couple of inches so you can bring both hands to the inside of your right leg. Now we're going to melt the chest down towards the floor, perhaps walking the hands forward, bring the forearms down to the mat. And then we're gonna try to get the right shoulder behind the right calf. So you might use the thumb, the right thumb, to push the calf muscle in towards the neck to nuzzle the right shoulder behind the right calf. So that might be one thing you try. You might come up onto your hands, lift up onto your right toes, and then try to elevate your right leg up off the floor. So that might be one thing to try. You might just be melting the chest towards the inside of the right leg, if that's plenty for what you wanna to do today. You might tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, and something, something's gonna happen here. And then shift the weight forward. I'm kind of cheat. You might call this a cheat. Um, this is Ekapada Kundanyasana 2. Um, the cheat would be 
I'm bending, here I'll turn around so the video audience can see me. I'm um, snuzzling the arm underneath the leg, and then I'm uh, shifting the weight of my upper body forward, lifting my right leg up off the floor, tucking my back toes, uh, lifting my back knee, and then I'm going to bend my left elbow to support my hip on my left elbow. So I think a more traditional, harder version of the pose would um, not have you bend the elbow into the hip, but just straighten that floating arm. Okay, just snuff a little arm balance in on you. I'm gonna sneak some more in later. Um, send it back, downward facing dog. Uh, so we luxuriated in our hand to big toe pose, and now we're seeing what, we can, what crazy stuff we can do with all that opening. Okay, right leg, left leg lifts. Oh, look to the top of your mat, lunge your left foot forward. Create your long stride, and then right knee down, possibly onto some padding. Look over the right shoulder, point the right toes, bend the right knee. Left hand might come to the left thigh or left forearm to the left thigh. Kick your foot into your hand, pull your heel towards your outer hip. Wrap your right ribs forward, square your chest forward. Back off, shifting the hips back for less. Shift the hips forward for more. Heel to the hip and resist with the foot. So foot's pushing back this way as the hand pulls it in towards the heel. <sighs> Breathe. Take that thread of your breath, push the thread down, thread it back up, down, up. Weaving the practice together, not weaving, uh, stitching the practice together. I'm good at mixing metaphors, very good at it. <laughs> okay, release the right leg, right hand to the floor, look over your left shoulder, point your left toes, bend the left knee, bring the hand to the outside of the foot, peel, pull the heel in towards the hip, back the hips off, or shift the hips forward. Again, breathe. So as far as um, patella injury, I don't know how much of you, this you can do with the uh, patella injury. For me though, the, um, the front of my, um, my kneecaps, not even at this point, it's not even on the mat. It's more uh, the space above the kneecap is uh, grounded. But you might try some modifications. You could do a, um, a quad stretch of a uh, bow pose on its side. So you're laying on your back, rounding your feet, and then you roll to one side. That could be a shoulder over and a quad stretch. Okay, release the foot. And we gotta try that crazy Ekapada Kundinyasa too. Arm balance. So um, walk the left foot out to the left. Both hands come to the inside of the left leg. Hug the left knee in towards the left shoulder. And you might walk the foot forward a couple of inches, like I'm doing here. Okay, then elbows might come down, just getting that depth. And then you might bring the left shoulder behind the left calf. That might be your porridge today. Hands on either side of the front foot. Lift the back toes, lift the back leg. Start to shift the weight of the body forward, lifting up onto the knee. And then, if you're like me, you're gonna do this little shelf with your right elbow. So, with each arm balance, <laughs> achieving um, that shape starts with a single breath, a single instance, a single moment of flight. So consider just being there for a second, and then next time you'll be there for uh, a second and a half, and just build on Build, you just build, build on a little bit. Set your foundation and build on it. Okay, uh, let's just get the heck out of all of that and stand up. Whew. I'm glad to be standing, which because it means we're probably gonna be hula hooping soon, which is everybody's favorite part of yoga class, uh, which makes me think we should just have a hula hoop class. Um, everybody order your hula hoops if you have not already. Um, I still don't know the name of the hula hoop, hoop company that mine came from, so 
once I get that, I'll share that information with you. Okay, uh, angle your heels out, angle your toes out, hands to the hips, bend the knees in the direction of the toes, head over heart, heart over the center of the pelvis, extend through your inner thighs, contract through your outer hips, sink the hips down to the height of your knees to the best of your ability. Weight is in the heels, sweep the arms overhead, exhale, right arm underneath your left, palms together, elbows lift, forearms away from the face, upper body back, Lengthen the tailbone down, extend through the inner heels, weight, weight extend through the inner thighs, weight in the heels, wrap your arms tightly, opening up your wrist and shoulders for five, four, three, two, one. Keep your hips low, sweep your arms overhead, exhale, left arm underneath your right. Palms together or grab shoulders. Lift the elbows, forearms away from the face, upper body back. Extend through the inner thighs, contract through the outer hips, weight in the heels. Wrap arms and legs tightly, or arms tightly for five, four, three, two, and one. Straighten your legs, straighten your arms, sweep your arms overhead, and exhale, release your arms to your sides. Heel toe your feet back together. Okay, grab your hula hoop, imaginary or otherwise. Hula hooping is the counter pose to goddess. Circles with the hips, one direction. And the other direction. Mine are fast. Just feeling fast circles today. Slow it down. Okay. <sighs> Love that hula hoop. Okay. Take your feet wide apart. Heels to the back edge of your mat. Perhaps have your blocks handy in front of you. Tone the muscles up your legs as so you're pulling tight stockings up your legs. Ground through the outer edges of your feet, hands on your hips, elbows to the back wall. Lift up and out through your chin, exhale, hinge at the hips. Chin and chest parallel to the floor, plant your wrists below your shoulders. Left hand below your face, right hand to the glass of water that you're placing at your low back. Begin to revolve your left ribs towards the right wall without spilling your glass of water, meaning you don't want that left hip to dip down. Push the thigh bones back, extend the crown of the head forward. Hug your right shoulder blade onto the back of your chest. Once your shoulders are stacked, you might lift your right arm to the sky. If you'd like today, turn your palm to face the other way and then wrap your arm behind your hips and try to grab the top of your right thigh. Hug the right shoulder onto the back of the chest, thigh bones back, crown of the head forward, revolve around the central channel of your spine, which is parallel to the mat. Look down, hand down, left hand to the glass of water, Tone the legs, revolve the right ribs towards the left wall, keeping the, par the, keeping the spine parallel to the floor, revolving around that central channel, hugging the left shoulder onto the back of the chest without spilling the glass of water, sweep the left arm skyward. If you'd like, turn the palm back, wrap the arm behind the back, grab the top of the right thigh, left <laughs> yeah, top of the right thigh with the left hand, Thighs back, left shoulder hugs deeply onto the back of the chest, right ribs begin to revolve skyward. And then look down, hands down. Push back through your thighs and then lengthen your spine towards the floor, walking your hands back in space. You can, vary, variations on this pose would be uh, hands, uh, hands shoulder width distance, elbows bent, head on the floor. Grab the outsides of the ankles, grab the big toes, interlace your fingers behind your back, whatever to create opening along the back of the body. And then you might bring your head to the floor if that's accessible, or onto a blanket, onto a block, onto a combination of blankets and blocks so that there's enough height for your head to ground. Lengthen up along the backs of your legs, lifting into your hips, cascading that length down your spine into the floor through the crown of your head. I like this one personally. Um, I think we will do an inversion, but if you'd like to take a headstand from here or you're working on that, if your head is on the floor, you want your uh, elbows bent 90 degrees, wrists below the elbows, shoulders and elbows at the same height. Push down through the crown of the head, so you shift weight forward, down into your head, elevate the feet, squeeze the legs together, Thigh bones back, tailbone lifts. Push the crown of the head down, lift the shoulders out away from the ears. Personally, not my favorite version of headstand. 
Uh, not that you need to know that, but <laughs> if you don't want to hold here for too long, you might slowly, gracefully start to make your way back down, feet to the floor. Hands back below the shoulders, shoulders away from the ears, lengthen the torso, hands to the hips, elbows to the ceiling, draw back through the sides of the waistline, come back up, heel toe your feet back together. Okay, I'm grabbing my invisible hula hoop, shifting the hips one way, keeping the knees soft, ankles soft, upper body kind of stationary, other direction. Okay. What's next? Let me consult my notes very quickly here. Okay, hula. Okay, malasana. So this pose might require some props. So have your blanket, if you have one behind you. Turn your knees out, much as you did for goddess pose, but the heels are gonna be a little closer together. Hands to the heart, collarbones broad. If it's okay for the knees, you're gonna to start to bend the knees in the direction of the toes to sink your hips down towards the floor into a yoga squat. So often the heels are up off the floor. So you're not, uh, it's hard to train the heels to go down if the heels are not weight bearing. So in that case, you're gonna bring some hit weight, height underneath your heels to train the heels down into that weight. Widen the arms into the inner thighs, hug the inner thighs into the outer arms. So as you widen the arms into the legs, the collarbones broaden, the heart lifts. As you hug the knees into the outer arms, the tailbone lengthens downward. So extend your spine. And then sit your bottom onto the floor. And we are going to do um, Let's do our inversion now, and then we will do our uh, second round of arm balances, which is going to be in the form of Eka Hasta Bhujasana. Don't know the translation from Sanskrit, but uh, you'll see what it looks like in a moment. Okay, so um, again, today's not the day I'm gonna go into an extensive um, tutorial of headstand. But if you have a headstand practice and you use the wall, please come to the wall now. Um, if, you are, if you are able to balance in headstand but are still using the wall, today might be the day to um, try moving further away from the wall. So try just like uh, to widening the gap between you and that safety net. So the safety net's still there, it's just a little farther away so that when you come up, you don't automatically hit the wall. Um, okay, so headstand time. Um, elbows, shoulder width distance apart, interlace your fingers like so. So you want uh, space between the heels of your hands. Forearms down, elbows below the shoulders, melt the back of the heart, shoulders away from the ears, draw the lower ribs in and back, lift the hips up like forearm dog. So if you are not practicing headstand yet, you might just hang out in this forearm dog pose, building the strength which you may later use to practice headstand. Walk your feet in without allowing your shoulders to come forward of your hips, and then lower your head down. Push back through the forearms, lengthen the sides of the neck, walk the feet in anymore. And then if you're working away from the wall, try slowly lifting the legs one at a time. Heels over the hips, Hips over the crown, hips uh, aligned over the heart, heart over the head. So you're uh, switching your orientation to the earth here, switching your orientation to gravity, helping to improve a blood flow. And as I was explaining last week, this idea of um, like. <laughs> If you've never done this before and you're first practicing it, it is not easy. It's really uh, a lot of um, strain or um, work in the upper back um, and in the arms. But once you have started a practice of this and if you do it often and start prolonging your uh, time in the pose, then um, you can kind of see how you could hold this pose for five minutes. You could potentially hold this pose 
for 10, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, it's kind of just getting those fi that fine tuning, those small, um, those small reactions to balancing in this way. So being up on your head instead of on your feet. Um, so yeah, just think about it. You even have more surface area of your body touching the floor here than you do when you're standing on two feet. Um, so yeah, that's my logic. Okay, so notice what you're feeling while you're up in the shape. And when the pose gets too hot for you, gets too Papa Bear porridge for you, then, um, then that's your signal to come on down and take a child's pose. So we will all meet there eventually. Try to think about coming out of the pose mindfully, gracefully. Transitions being a part of the practice. Okay. So, again, luxuriate in this pose, in this moment. Start your child's pose with the arms forward, melt the forearms and elbows down towards the floor. Head, heart, hips, heavy. Where are you feeling? What are you feeling? By noticing the signals of your body, can you better begin to send uh, that prana, life energy, vital energy throughout your body? Okay, now let's swing the arms back, palms facing up, heads of the arm bones roll forward. How does that feel? Okay, roll up through the spine, coming to seated. You might have some padding here. I'm gonna try to figure out which angle is better to view these shapes from. I'm thinking the side angle, which we have now. Okay, so um, get your padding underneath your hips, extend your legs forward, sit on the edge of the padding. So this is gonna be a 90 minute class, so we, we have about um, 20 minutes left to practice. Uh, FYI, since I didn't say how long this class was going to be. Okay, um, register that information and then come back to this moment. Wow, with this angle, I kind of see that um, I'm not practicing what I'm preaching here. So I typically only have one, uh, one fold of blanket underneath, me, underneath my hips, but I saw when I sat here that my lower spine was slightly rounded, so I'd probably benefit from more height underneath my hips. So um, you want your uh, tailbone lengthening down, your head over your heart, heart over the center of your pelvis, shoulder blades on the back. Extend through your legs, root through your thighs, and find your version of um, <laughs> Dandasana, staff pose. So uh, depending on your particular proportions, I am a I consider myself a long torso, uh, short arms in comparison person. So my hands rest right by my hips with my uh, spine upright. You might have your hands back here, depending on that uh, torso to arm ratio. Chin parallel to the floor, soften the edges of your mouth, and then keep the left leg as it is, bring the right knee into the chest, and interlace your fingers around your right foot Lift your right shin parallel to the floor. So this is very similar to the happy baby, half happy baby pose we did at the beginning of class. Draw back a couple of times, do this whole thing. And then we're gonna do something similar to the um, pigeon on its back by hugging the uh, 
shin into the arms and doing a little baby cradle. So uh, maybe this movement is a circular movement, getting into the hips one direction and in the other direction. Okay. So here is where the blocks might really come in handy, uh, come to think of it. So if you do have blocks, um, you will likely benefit from using them here. So I place my blocks on either side of my, uh, my left thigh. Okay, so the hands are gonna be on the blocks if you have the blocks, but I'm going to um, be in solidarity with those of you who don't have blocks and make this a little harder on myself. So uh, either way, hands on blocks or hands not on blocks. I'm gonna hug my leg high up onto my arm, then clamp my heel towards my hip, round my spine forward, shift weight into my hands, make my left leg ramrod straight, and then begin to lift my hips up off the floor. So you might not be able to see it, but my legs and my hips are off the floor. So this is one. And then we might hug the knees together around the shoulder. Shift the hips back, extend the arms and legs straight. And there's more you could do from here. Uh, I am not feeling the strength <laughs> to do it myself right now. Okay, so uh, that angle, I need some like more color contrast here I'm seeing in the view screen, but uh, hopefully you did something there. Uh, you had some interest, <laughs> you had some points of interest there. And now we'll do the second side. So right, le right leg extends forward, uh, left shin parallel to the floor, interlace your fingers, kick and pull. And cradle, circles one direction, circles the other direction. Okay, left shin parallel to the floor, Hook your left arm underneath your left shoulder. Hug it in, clamp it down, hands to either side of the front thigh. Draw your waistline back, shift the weight of your upper body forward. Right leg, ramrod straight, push and lift. And then maybe Ashtavarkrasana, and then heat knees to the shoulder, shift the chest forward, uh, elbows straight. Ugh. Draw back through the sides of your waistline. That's where I'm going, ew, my core is a uh, little tired. My poor little core is tired. Okay, <laughs> stand your legs back to uh, Dandasana. Lengthen down through your tailbone, ground through your thighs, shoulders on your back. Look to a distant horizon. Give yourself a uh, Give yourself a gold medal for trying something new, perhaps. Or just give yourself a gold medal for being present. You rock, this is hard. It's hard to do yoga at your house without other people. Um, and hopefully through this, um, through this experience, maybe you are connecting more deeply with your own practice, giving yourself a little more liberty to do your own thing, explore your own body, take things at your own pace. <sighs> okay, uh, reverse tabletop, hands behind your hips, my fingers are pointing forward, push your feet down, lift your hips up, walk your heels below your knees, shoulders on the back, hips and chest lift, gaze goes up and then gaze goes back. Countering those uh, forward folding poses for the spine rounding, core strengthening. Chin to the chest, look down the front line of your body, knees down, take a rest. So we'll do that again, either in the form of um, reverse table or east facing pose with the legs straight. So this is always reminiscent to me of flash dance, which I've never actually seen the movie, but everybody knows the, everybody knows the flash dance. Okay, so push your, uh, hands down, shoulders back, look down the center line of your body, straighten your legs, point your toes, push your heels down, lift your hips up, and then head tilts back because somebody's pouring a bucket of water on you, I think. Chest lifts, uh, hips lift, point your toes, open up the front of your body. Five, four, three, two, and one. Chin down, hips down, 
and let's uh, heels in towards the hips, feet are hip width distance apart, look up to the sky, reach with your fingertips skyward, and then tuck your tailbone towards your heels, slowly lower your back body to the floor with control. At some point you might try to lose that control, then try to regain it as you get to the upper back, the neck, the head, arms to your sides. <sighs> arms at your sides. If you have one of those nifty blocks, you might take it out flow setting, place it between your thighs. Arms at your sides, feet parallel. Push your feet down, lift your hips up. Lengthen through your tailbone. Starting out with a little baby bridge. And then perhaps growing the bridge. Interlace the fingers behind your back. Tuck your shoulder blades one at a time underneath your chest so that the upper back lifts away from the floor. Squeeze the block. Push your feet down. Lengthen your tailbone. Look down the front line of your posture. So this is one where you're looking down at yourself and perhaps noticing some incongruency between the two sides of your shape. So what side looks shorter? What side looks less open, more tight? And if you can identify that, how do you start to move from within to create more balance in your expression? Lower your hips, untuck your shoulders, remove the block if you have it, walk your feet as wide as your mat, let your knees fall together, one hand to your belly, one hand to your heart. <sighs> Connect with your breath in your body. And again, you might use that imagery of the thread. With this information of your hands on your body, first strike, try to fill your lower abdomen, middle body, and chest as you inhale. And as you exhale, empty in the opposite direction. So first the chest falls, then the, low, the middle body, then the abdomen, lower abdomen. One more back bend. Um, what are you feeling like today? Do you want to do another bridge pose? Do you want to do a bound bridge? Are you just feeling like going wild with a little, uh, little bit of a um, wheel pose? Um, I'm just going to encourage you to do your thing, and I'm going to do my thing. I'm, I'm feeling like I need that uh, energy that a wheel pose, only a wheel pose, can provide right now. So if you want to use that block between your thighs, that can be done with any of these poses. Heels parallel, hands either frame your front foot or frame your head or interlace behind your back. So come on up. Oh. Take some breath. Let the pose bring you into this experience of your body. And then consider that each pose um, builds a different awareness in your body and might also uh, resonate a different energy as you come out of it. So especially these big poses, these um, maybe I would even categorize them as stressful or demanding poses, have more of a, a resonance. So we often take a beat, take some uh, breath after we do these big ones to notice the effect of the pose. Okay, so if you're up, come on down. Take that same shape with the feet apart, knees towards or together, hands on the chest and the abdomen. If you'd like, you can even close your eyes at this point in the practice.
arms out to a T. Widen the knees apart and then let the knees fall to the right as you exhale next. Windshield wipers, inhale knees back to center and exhale knees to the left. Inhale center, exhale right. I know the demands of the uh, postures are starting to slow down at this point. Can you keep your mind focused on your body, focused on the moment? You can always use the thread of your breath to delve back into your experience of the present moment. Okay, knees back to center after one more visit to the left. Knees into the chest, cuff your knees with your hands and then pull your knees out and up towards your armpits. Happy baby, full on, side to side. Draw one knee down and the other, grabbing the outer edges of the feet. And then from happy baby, soles of the feet together, interlace your fingers around the outer edges of your feet, widen through the inner thighs, contract through the outer hips, uh, reclined bound angle pose. Feet might press into the hands so the head, the arm bones lift away from the mat. Upper back curls. And then finally, draw your knees together and wrap your arms around the fronts of your legs. Embrace yourself. Tuck your chin to your chest, draw your forehead towards your to your knees, squeeze your inner legs together, tuck your tailbone towards your heels, round your spine so that less of your back body is on the floor. Hug in. And then slowly let go. I encourage you to keep with your practice. It is not over. The best is yet to come. Savasana, get comfortable, get supported, get warm. Um, so take a little time here to um, set up for comfort in this shape. The more comfortable you are, uh, the better it's, <laughs> the better it's going to work. <laughs> um, so yeah, you might put on your socks as I'm doing. Uh, oh yeah, I remember I threw my sweatshirt. So um, yeah, have a blanket, maybe even have a pillow, maybe a bolster. And then as you are ready with any props you might may desire, extend out through your legs, placing your heels wider than your outer hips and letting the feet widen out to either side of the room. Arms at your sides, palms turned up. You might press your elbows down one at a time to gently tuck your shoulder blades underneath your chest. Just giving the heart a little bit more space to expand, to uh, radiate. You might tuck your chin to your chest, even sliding some height underneath the back of your head if that feels more supportive. It helps create more length along the upper spine. Feel the support of the earth beneath you. Scan the body for any residual work or tension from the posture practice. 
This is kind of a counter pose to everything we've done. A neutralization of the body. The instruction becomes stillness. We are not slipping into a state of unconsciousness. We are attempting a state of um, <laughs> attempting a state of you could say enlightenment, where um, perhaps the consciousness is. Able to um, transcend the body to a degree. Where we can view the part of ourselves that is not only beyond the occupation of this physical form, this physical body. But it's even beyond the occupation of the mind. These terrestrial thoughts, concerns. That we connect with that spark of consciousness that inhabits this earthly vehicle. So by attempting to see ourselves from that point, we might recognize that the body continues its vital functions. The heart and the lungs continue on without intervention. How might we begin to see the mind, see the thoughts without intervention? Perhaps you recognize that there is a moment, perhaps a brief moment, where that becomes clear, that ability to watch the mind. Watch the body at rest.
now begin to reawaken in your extremities. Perhaps beginning movement in the fingers and then the toes. Maybe you like to uh, circle the wrists and the ankles in one direction and in the other direction. What feels natural? Rocking the arms, rocking the head, the legs, stretching the arms overhead. Eventually bend your knees, one at a time, feet to the floor. Roll onto your right side, supporting your head on your right arm. Transitioning from our corpse pose into this fetal position. Keeping your eyes closed, press your way back to a comfortable seated position. We'll only be here a moment, so any seat is appropriate for this time. Hands together at heart center. We'll close practice with a single sound of OM. Exhale and inhale for OM. time making the space to do this yoga class. Um, the light in me honors the light in each of you. Namaste.